In this video, we're going to talk about Archimedes' principle and buoyant force. The basic idea behind Archimedes' principle is that the buoyant force acting on an object that's immersed in a fluid is equal to the weight of the fluid displaced by that object. Now, this problem is going to illustrate the concept of Archimedes' principle. And you'll see it as we go through the problem. But now, let's talk about something. Let's say if you want to lift a block with a rope in air, is it easier to lift it up in air or is it easier to lift up the block if it's submerged in water? What would you say? It turns out that it's a lot easier to lift up the block when it's submerged in water since water has a higher density than air. The portion of water that's displaced by the block exerts an upward buoyant force on the block, which we'll call FB. And as a result, the tension in the rope doesn't have to be as great. So objects appear to be lighter in water than in air. And this is all related to Archimedes' principle. So let's focus on this example. So we have a 10 kilogram block of aluminum attached to a rope. What is the tension force in a rope if the block is in a vacuum? So let's say that is the aluminum block. And we have an upward tension force that's lifting up the block. And then there's the downward weight force acting on the block. Now in a vacuum there is no upward buoyant force because there's no air molecules to lift up the weight of the block. So therefore the tension force would represent the true weight of the block. And the weight of the block is mg. So the tension force is equal to mg. So the mass is 10 kilograms and g is 9.8. So the answer for part A is 98 newtons. That's the actual weight of the block. Now what about part B? What is the tension force if the block is in air? Now air is a fluid the same way as water is a fluid. So as a result, air is going to push up the block with an upward buoyant force. So the sum of all forces in the y direction is going to be based on the two upward forces. That's going to be positive t and positive fb. And the weight force is in a negative y direction. So we're going to put negative w. In order to get the minimum force that the rope has to apply in order to keep the block stationary. If we don't want the block to fall or to accelerate upward, if we want it to stay in place, the net force in the y direction must be zero. So solving for the tension force, we need to take these two terms, move it to the other side. So w is negative on the right side, but it's going to be positive on the left. And the buoyant force is going to be negative on the left. So the tension force is the weight force minus the buoyant force. In part A, there was no buoyant force, so the tension force was just the weight force. But for parts B and C, the tension force is going to be the difference between the weight force and the buoyant force. Now, how do we calculate the buoyant force? What can we do to find the answer? Now let's say if we have an object submerged in the fluid. The fluid could be water or it could be air. And let's use a cylinder. The fluid exerts a force on the top surface of the cylinder, which we'll call F1. And it also exerts a force on the bottom surface, F2. 
the difference in these two forces is equal to the buoyant force. As you go deeper in water, the pressure is greater. So because the pressure at the bottom is greater than the pressure at the top, F2 is going to be greater than F1. The deeper you go in water, the greater the force that it will exert on you. And so that's why we have a net upward buoyant force, because the pressure is greater at the bottom than it is at the top. So that buoyant force is the difference between F2 and F1. Now granted, the fluid does exert a force in the X direction, but these forces cancel out because they're at the same depth. So we don't have to worry about that. So only the forces in the Y direction is what we're concerned about. Now force, well we know that pressure is force divided by area. So force is pressure times area. So F2 is going to be P2 times A. And F1 is P2, P1 times A. Now A is the same. The area of the top part of the cylinder is the same as the area of the bottom part of the cylinder. We're assuming that we have a, a uniform shaped uh, cylinder. So now what should we replace P2 and P1 with? Now the pressure exerted by a fluid is force divided by area, the force that the fluid exerts over a given area. And the force exerted by the fluid is basically the weight of the fluid. And density is mass over volume. So mass is density times volume. So we can replace M with rho times V. And volume is basically area times height. So we could cancel A. So the pressure exerted by a fluid is equal to the density times the gravitational acceleration times the height. So we can replace P with that, rho GH. Now this is going to be the density of the fluid times the gravitational acceleration times the height. Now the height is going to be different at these two points. So H1 is the distance between the top surface of the fluid and where the force acts. H2 is the difference between the surface of the fluid and this location, the bottom part of the cylinder. So P1 is going to be the density of the fluid times G times H1 times A. Now let's factor out PF, G, and A. So the buoyant force is equal to rho ga times h2 minus h1. Now if we take the difference between h2 and h1, this will give us the height of the cylinder, which I'm going to call just h. And now let's get rid of some stuff. So the buoyant force is equal to the density of the fluid times the gravitational acceleration times the area, and then let's replace H2 minus H1 with H. Now A times H, that's the volume. So here's the equation for the buoyant force. It's equal to the density of the fluid times the volume times the gravitational acceleration. You may want to write down this equation. Now, the density of the fluid times the volume of the object submerged, in this case, the entire object is submerged, that will give you the mass of the fluid. As we said, density is mass over volume. So, density times volume is mass. So, M is equal to rho times V. So, the buoyant force is equal to the mass of the fluid times the gravitational acceleration. And mg is basically the weight. 
So the upward buoyant force is equal to the weight of the fluid that's displaced by the object. And so this is the basis of Archimedes principle, which states that the buoyant force of an object immersed in a fluid is equal to the weight of the fluid that's displaced by the object. So that expression is the basis for Archimedes principle. And this is how we can calculate the upward buoyant force. So based on the picture that we drew, we had an upward tension force, a downward weight force, and an upward buoyant force. And we said that the tension is the difference between the weight force and the buoyant force. So now to answer part B, we need to calculate the buoyant force. In order to do so, we need the volume of the aluminum block. So density is mass divided by volume. If you rearrange the equation, let's cross multiply. So m is equal to rho v. And solving for v, we need to divide by the density. So the volume of the aluminum block is going to be the mass of the block divided by the density of the block. The mass of the block is 10 kilograms, and the density is 2,700 kilograms per cubic meter. So let's divide those two numbers. So the volume of the block is 0 0.0037 cubic meters. So now we can calculate the buoyant force acting on the block in air. So the density of the fluid in part B, which is air, is very small, it's 1.29, and the volume is 0 0.0037 times the gravitational acceleration of 9.8. And so the buoyant force is 0 0.047 newtons. So the tension of the rope in air is going to be the weight force, which is 98, minus the buoyant force of 0 0.047, which is really not going to make much of a difference. So the tension force is slightly less. It's 97.953 newtons. So if you wish to calculate the weight of an object in air, it's going to be almost equal to the true weight, in this case, which is 98 newtons. But now let's see how much is going to change in water. So the volume of the object is going to be the same. However, the buoyant force is different because the density of the fluid is different. So the buoyant force caused by the displaced water molecules is going to be the density of the fluid, which the density of water is 1,000 kilograms per cubic meter, times the volume of the submerged object, which is 0 0.0037 times g. So the buoyant force is 36.26 newtons. And that's significant. So the tension is going to be the weight force, which is mg, that's 10 times 9.8, or 98, minus the buoyant force of 36.26. And so that's going to be 61.74 newtons. So as you can see, it's a lot easier to lift up the block in water than it is in a vacuum or in air. In air, it's almost about 98 newtons of force that's required to lift up this block. In water, it's only 61.74 newtons. So as the density of the fluid increases, it becomes easier to lift up the block that is submerged in that fluid.